Hey everybody, so I wanna show you something, check this out. I am on the local version of the Laircast website, and if I open up Chrome DevTools and visit the Network tab, watch what happens when I refresh the page. Yep, we're pulling in all of the various assets and view components that are required for this section of my website to run, and that's great. So now maybe if I load the path section, we will, on the fly, load in only the view components that are required for this page. Let's do one more. How about the, I don't know, the topic section? All right, and now we're pulling in a topic banner and things like that. You get the idea. This is pretty cool stuff. We are leveraging what's known as code splitting to allow for this. All right, so what is code splitting? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like, actually. We are taking a large bundle or file, effectively, and we are splitting it up into any number of chunks that we then serve to the user. And you know what? I never thought I'd say that in a video. We are serving chunks to the user, and you're gonna eat those chunks, and you're gonna like those chunks. But um, yeah, I mean, that's what we're doing. Think about it. Uh, it would be a shame to require the user to download code related to your form or your charting library if they will never visit sections of your website related to a forum or, or a section where you display a chart or something like that. It's just a shame, right? Why make them download that if they will never require it? Uh, and the reason why we did it is, well, twofold. One, we didn't know any other way. And two, there are pros and cons to that approach. Uh, a pro is, yes, you pay a greater cost up front. You gotta download that large JavaScript file. On the other hand, once you've pulled it in, once you've paid that initial toll, so to speak, uh, the website will feel very snappy. On the other hand, if we leverage code splitting, that initial page load will be faster. And if you work on a website or a marketplace where every 100 milliseconds factors into whether or not a person makes a, a purchase or not, uh, that, that fast page load really does make a difference. But on the other hand, you might have noticed this. Sometimes when you're browsing the site, it just feels like there's a bit of latency. And that's because when you click on such and such page, it then has to make requests to pull in all of the, um, the data or the components on the fly. And it does that really quickly, but you still notice it. And that's why sometimes people, even to this day, think, I think I'd rather just have the large bundle because once the user pulls it in, they're good to go. So it's almost like paying the toll up front rather than distributing the cost of that toll um, as they browse the entire website, right? And it's a shame, but, but that's just the reality we're in. However, we now have a way to leverage the best of both worlds, at least what I would think of as the best of both worlds. And I'll show you. So I'm gonna start by opening my vite.configuration file, and I wanna show you a couple things. So if I scroll down to my build section, or you can create that object if you haven't already, you know, one option would be to manually declare your chunks. I'm saying chunk way too much in this video, but it ends up being appropriate. Anyways, I could declare rollup options. Uh, rollup is used behind the scenes. And for the output, if I can type, we're gonna declare some manual chunks, chunks. All right, so yeah, for example, if I were to just say all here, this is me manually stating that for every single uh, module, I'm just gonna throw it into this chunk called all. So we're kind of effectively disabling uh, code splitting here. So if I run vt build, now you'll see some yellow here. We can just ignore that for now, but if you're curious, it's just saying, hey, in one section, you're trying to dynamically import this um, package or whatever, but in another section, it's being statically imported. And it's trying to make you happy, but it can't do both at the same time. Anyways, it's not relevant here, we can ignore it. But sure enough, we can see that we now have a single, very large uh, export here that we can load. Cool. However, if I were to switch back, this will accept the, uh, the ID, basically. And what you could do is inspect this ID. And in fact, let's just do this. Let's console.log the ID. And you'll see it's like a big path to the file. Yeah, so here's all of those individual uh, paths that you see. So what we could do is inspect these to determine where they should be placed. So for example, and I'll just call it path in this case. We could say, well, if path.includes, um, yeah, how about this, node modules, then let's return 
AI is already figuring out what I'm saying here. Then let's throw it into a vendor uh, chunk. So let's save that. Otherwise, it will go into all. So let's come back, run it again. All right, and now we're extracting a new vendor bundle or file. And again, this could be especially helpful in terms of long-term caching. If you make a small change to a page component or something like that, it's a shame that you would then have to bust your vendor cache. Now, you likely don't have to. All right, and yeah, just to show you one more example, uh, we mentioned code mirror earlier. Well, at the top we could say, well, if the path includes uh, the code mirror library or an extension or a plugin related to that, let's put all of those into their own chunk. So yeah, notice we are manually creating these chunks. And then maybe otherwise we will just fall back to dynamic chunks. All right, so now we have our vendor uh, file. We have our code mirror file. Again, look how big that is. So it's nice to, to place everything related to that into its own chunk. And then everything else can be loaded on the fly, which is really cool. All right, so I wanted to show you that, but still, that's not the main topic of this video. Either way, we're still in that situation where when we visit a page, we have to dynamically pull in all of the data and components that are required for that page to load. However, if I visit my app service provider, if I scroll down to my boot method, I'm gonna pull in the Vite facade and I'm gonna say prefetch. Now, if we click through here, you'll see it accepts uh, the event that it should run on, and this is the JavaScript event. So by default, it's gonna wait for uh, the load event to fire, and then uh, at very low priority, it's going to prefetch all of your, your various uh, assets for the entire website, but it's only gonna do that after that load event has fired. And then concurrency, that's basically how many do you want to load uh, at once? And we're gonna stick with three there. All right, so I'm gonna say concurrency using named parameters, three. And that's it, that's all we have to do here. So check this out. I will return to my browser. All right, let's give it another shot. So once again, I will open up my network tab, but now you can see even after the page is loaded, it is prefetching all of the components for my website behind the scenes. So yeah, let's search for, um, we had one for conversation list item. And remember, we saw that only on the forum at the beginning of the video. But now, even though we're not referencing it yet, it's being prefetched after the rest of the page has loaded. And that's really important. All of these are set to low priority. I wonder if I can even view that. Yeah, so notice priority is set to lowest. And what that means is it's like a hint to the browser that, hey, you should focus on any user specific stuff first. And then if you have any time left over, uh, you can pull in some of these, uh, these extra assets behind the scenes, less urgent um, assets behind the scenes. But yeah, now we have the best of both worlds. We got the fast initial page load, but then behind the scenes, we pulled in the rest of the assets so that when I visit a new page, it will load very quickly compared to uh, the traditional way where you have a bit of lag uh, because of code splitting. I like it. It all feels really good to me. All right, so that's it. Give it a shot. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to leave a comment below. And yeah, let me know what you think. Hey. Oh, what the? Isn't that cool?